for a healthy heart, you hear a lot about cholesterol and dietary fats and, and um, good food choices. So today I'm going to um, try to clarify some of the um, information that there is on heart healthy eating because a lot of it can be confusing as far as what types of fats to be eating and how we can cut down on the fats in our diet. It's interesting that um, heart disease is the number one killer in North America. So things that we can do about um, preventing it um, are a good idea. So I think a lot of people get confused because there's so many labels on um, food packages that are a little confusing. Packages may say no cholesterol and you might wonder, well, is it still a healthy product? So we're going to talk quite a bit about um, cholesterol and fats and um, um, some guidelines for eating for a healthy heart. So I hope that you won't be so confused after this talk. Okay. Um, first of all, I just want to mention that nutrition plays an important part in prevention of heart disease, but there are a, a number of risk factors. It's not only cholesterol um, that can increase your risk for heart disease. So let's take a look at some of these. There are some risk factors that um, may make us have a, a greater risk for developing heart disease that we don't have any control over. And those are on the right hand side here. Um, if we have a family history of heart disease, uh, there's nothing that we can do about that. So um, it's good to think back on whether or not pe people in your family have had heart disease. And that gives you an idea um, whether or not you may be at an increased risk as well. Um, men tend to be at a greater risk than females, and there's nothing that you can be, do about your gender. Um, also age, as we get older, <laughs> our, uh, risk for heart disease increases, and those with diabetes tend to have a greater risk of heart disease as well. So it's important to control your diabetes and, and try to make sure that your blood sugars are, are well controlled if you do have diabetes. But the good news is that there are lots of things that we can do in our daily lifestyle that can reduce the risk of heart disease, things that we can have control over. Um, the first one there says elevated blood fats. So things like cholesterol and triglycerides um, that are in the blood, if, if our levels are high, that can actually increase our risk of heart disease. Um, high blood pressure is another one that can increase your risk of heart disease. Um, smoking, uh, excess body fat, so it's a good idea to maintain a healthy weight. Um, lack of exercise and stress are all things that we can have some control over in our lives. And I brought an example of um, an artery to show today, and I also have a slide of it. And um, what I wanted to show here as far as cholesterol goes, is that it, it does float in our um, arteries, in the blood. And if we have a high level of cholesterol, what can happen is that it can gradually build up over time and um, lead to a blockage in the artery. So we can see, um, this is a, a cross section of an artery, and we can see these little fatty streaks that, that de develop on the artery wall. And over time, if if that um, builds up and up, it can actually cause a blockage. And what happens then is, depending on um, where the artery is going to, if it's an artery going to the brain, it could lead to a stroke. Or if it's an artery going to the heart, it could lead to a heart attack. So this is one reason why we are concerned about the cholesterol in the blood, as well as triglyceride levels. Okay, so it's kind of an interesting thing to take a look at. Two of the main goals for a healthy heart are to reduce our total fat intake. Most Canadians get too much fat in their diets, and um, it's a good idea if all of us can really be looking at the fat in our diet and try to cut down on fats, the total fats. Um, but we also are concerned about the type of fats that we're eating. And we're going to talk more today about, particularly about saturated fats. Because saturated fats are the kind that can, um, if we eat them, um, it, it stimulates our body to produce more cholesterol. Does anybody know where cholesterol is made in the body? What part of the body makes cholesterol? It's actually made in the liver. 
okay? So we can eat cholesterol from food, but our own body also produces cholesterol. And if we have a, an um, intake that's high in saturated fats, our body will tend to produce more cholesterol. Okay, so let's talk about some ways that we can cut down on total fat intake, and particularly on um, the intake of saturated fat. Okay. So the, I was just explaining that um, saturated fats tend to increase the blood cholesterol, but also saturated fats are usually from animal sources, okay? And these fats are also um, solid at room temperature. So if you think of things like lard and butter, they're all solid at room temperature. The fat that's on the outside of a piece of steak would be a source of saturated fat. <laughs> Um, the unsaturated fats, you might have heard of the terms polyunsaturated or monounsaturated. Um, these ones don't increase your cholesterol level, and they're usually found from vegetable sources. And another way to keep these in mind is that these are usually liquid at room temperature. So they're, they would be oils, vegetable oils, like corn oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil, and those are the better kinds to be eating. Now up where it says saturated fat, it says animal fat, but there are um, some vegetable fats that can also be high in saturated um, fat, and those are what we refer to as the tropical oils, or coconut oil, palm kernel oil, uh, palm oil. And um, so if you see a label that says all vegetable, no cholesterol, well, it could still be high in saturated fats because it may have coconut oil in it. So that's something to keep in mind. Okay, so some ways of watching the amount of saturated fat in our diet is by watching the portions, um, sizes of meat that we're taking in. A lot of people eat way more meat than they really need. And if you go to a restaurant, you also often find that the portion size is really quite large. And um, in Canada's food guide, it recommends, um, you know, about four or six ounces of meat uh, per day from that food group. So it's, it's really easy to overdo that. And an example of two ounces of meat would be about the size of a deck of cards. Okay, so if you had um, two decks of cards, that would um, easily meet your protein needs for the day. So watching your portion sizes, and then also cutting away, um, trimming the fat off can really help um, cut down on that saturated fat. And remember I said that saturated fat is solid at room temperature. You can see how um, all this white part right here is a prime example of saturated fat. Okay, how we cook our meat can make a difference too. If you're frying and adding fat, that doesn't really help to reduce our fat intake. So it's a good idea to think of cooking methods that can help um, get rid of the fat. Things like barbecuing, um, broiling, roasting, baking, rather than frying. Okay, try, we're really encouraging people to try to get away, away from frying. Here we have an example of a high fat um, steak dinner. And it, it gives an example of how many calories would be in each of the um, different foods here. So we have a really large piece of steak, um, which the steak itself has about 1,200 calories in it. And for some people, that's as many calories as they may need in a whole day. Okay. Uh, and it also has a potato with the works on it, with the sour cream and bacon bits. We're going to take a look at um, the breakdown of the calories in that potato a little later on. And then the salad with a, a high fat salad dressing and the wine. So in total, the number of calories in this dinner has about uh, 1,782 calories. So this dinner looks very similar, but surprise, surprise, the calories are much lower. There's about 1,000 fewer calories in this dinner because the, um, the steak has actually been trimmed of all the fat and broiled instead of fried. And we have here a low-fat potato, so rather than adding a lot of sour cream and butter, we've added a, a low-fat dressing and some chives. And then also on the salad, there's a low-fat salad dressing. So taking a look at the fat in our diet doesn't mean that we can't enjoy a, a nice, healthy 
um, uh, delicious meal. It just means that we need to be a little bit careful about our food choices and about um, how we prepare our foods too. Okay. Are all of you taking the skin off your chicken when you prepare chicken? I see some people saying yes. Okay, some people are saying no. Well, you can get a, rid of a lot of fat by taking it off before you cook it. And some people will cook it and then take the skin off, which is good, that's better than eating the skin. But you'll get rid of even more fat by taking the skin off before you cook it. And we see here also a lot of different um, herbs and spices around this chicken. And that's a really nice way to enhance the flavor of your food. The thing about fat is that it carries a lot of flavor. So if we're getting back on fat, we want to do things to our meals that will enhance the flavor. So here we have um, some nice, beautiful red and green peppers, um, parsley, um, rosemary. And you can buy fresh rosemary at the stores now in the produce section. Or um, I really enjoy buying my herbs and spices in the bulk food section at the grocery store. They tend to be a lot cheaper than if you're buying them in the containers. Uh, also, this one right here is a bay leaf, which is really nice to add to soups or stews while they're cooking. But make sure you take it out so you don't swallow it. Um, and then peppercorns and garlic is a really nice um, way to enhance the flavor of your food as well. So thinking of um, all of these different ways of adding herbs and spices instead of a lot of salt, which um, can um, irritate high blood pressure. Okay, how many of you are having fish about once a week or more? Mm -hmm. Put your hand up if you are. Okay, some people are. Good. Yeah. Fish, fish is, um, it, we're being encouraged to eat more fish and um, there was actually some studies done on Eskimos um, because some researchers were curious to know why Eskimos had a low incidence of heart disease and they contributed or attributed it, it to um, their high intake of fish. So it's a good idea that um, if you can incorporate fish into your diet, it's nice and low in fat and it's also good for us, it's high in protein. And what do they do? Yes, yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I like to have some frozen fish on hand in my freezer. Um, it's really quick to prepare. You don't even thaw it out. You take it right from your freezer and, and bake it in your oven. So it's nice and quick. You can add all kinds of um, those nice herbs and spices we just talked about or um, um, lime or lemon juice is really nice on it as well. Okay. So along with the meat group in, um, that contain, can contain a lot of fat, the, the dairy group is another area that we can really be careful and watch our intake of saturated fats. Um, and they're starting to come out with nice low-fat milks and low-fat cottage cheese, low-fat yogurt. And the trick when you're shopping is to be reading uh, the labels. And I'll just show you right here, for instance, this 1% MF and the MF stands for milk fat. So that's what you want to be looking for on the label. Okay, Not only on uh, milk, but also on your other um, products. Ice milk, yogurt, cottage cheese. Um, actually, if any of you um, aren't aware, they now sell evaporated milk um, as a skim milk, which can be nice to add to soups or, or desserts instead of whipping cream. It has the same consistency, but but no fat compared to lots of fat in whipping cream. What's that called again? Pardon? This is evaporated milk, canned milk. Yes, it's and skim. skim. Right, it's made with skim milk, so yes, it doesn't have fat, fat yes. in it. Okay. You can also get powdered milk, skim milk. That's right. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to demonstrate the difference in fat content in different types of milk, because if you're drinking homo milk, you can't really um, tell how much fat is in there other than it tastes a little bit different. But just as an example, one cup of skim milk has about 80 calories in it, and it doesn't have fat in it. It has only a very trace amount because they've taken the fat out. Um, with 2% milk, which is the next one over, a cup has about 125 calories, and it is, it is um, the same as, say, drinking a cup of skim milk plus a teaspoon of butter or a pat of butter. 
Okay? And then with your homogenized milk here, they haven't taken any of the fat out, so it's like drinking a cup of skim milk plus two pats of butter. So every time you're drinking a cup of homo milk, you're having quite a bit of extra fat there. Yeah, and that's the saturated fat that we're trying to watch our intake of. Okay, a lot of people think that um, skim milk isn't as nutritious as regular milk, homo milk or 2%, but it is. It has, you know, just as much calcium and protein and vitamin D. And in fact, it's a little higher in some of these nutrients because it doesn't have the fat content in it. Okay, cheeses are another um, place that we can really watch our fat intake, and they're coming out with some really nice lower fat cheeses. Um, cheddar cheese has about 32% milk fat in it, which is pretty high. That's, that's quite a bit of fat. And when you're eating it, you don't realize how much fat you're taking in. So it's a good idea to look for those that are um, a little bit lower in fat by, again, reading the labels for the percentage of milk fat. Um, and we're coming out with processed skim milk cheese slices and, um, and some of the harder cheeses are also lower in fat now. So looking for ones that are 20% or lower is a good idea. Okay, a lot of people don't realize that when they're eating their, you know, one ounce of um, even the low-fat cheeses, for instance, the part skim mozzarella, which is about 15% milk fat, one ounce or one slice has about a teaspoon of fat in it still. Okay, so cheese tends to not be a low-fat food, even though it, it's the lower fat choices that you're choosing. Okay, fried foods tend to have a lot of fat in them too, so um, better to choose other choices when you go to a restaurant, you know, a plain um, sandwich rather than a, a fried hamburger would be a much better choice here. You can see the french fries have a lot of fat in them too, and um, the cherry pie pastry has a lot of fat in it. Okay. Um, before we continue on, I wanted to mention that, uh, the different types of fats that we are recommending. For instance, if you're using them in your salad dressings or cooking uh, muffins at home. Uh, I mentioned that it's the, the polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fats that are recommended. And these are liquid at room temperature. So some examples would be uh, the corn oil, the safflower oil, soy oil. Those are all really good choices. Um, these ones are referred to as monounsaturated, and uh, this is in particular the olive oil. But canola oil is also another very popular one in Canada that's high in, in uh, monounsaturated fat. So these are good choices. Okay, if when you're choosing a margarine, something that uh, is good to keep in mind is that the soft tub margarines are a better choice rather than the hard block margarines. Um, and the reason for that is that they have less saturated fat in them than the harder ones. Okay. Yes, the soft tub margarine is a better choice. But also, it doesn't really help to switch from butter to, to margarine and then use twice of it, twice as much of it. Because butter and margarine actually have the same amount of calories. If you're using a diet margarine, then that will have less calories in it, but the regular soft tub margarines have as many calories as butter does. So we still want to be careful about the amounts that we're using. Okay, here we have a potato, and often people will tell me, oh, potatoes are so fattening. And do you think that's true? No. Okay, this potato here only has about 140 calories. Um, so it's really the things that we put on, just a, a tea, couple of teaspoons of butter will add a couple or a hundred calories or so. And then if you're adding the sour cream, there's 52 more calories. Bacon bits can add a few more calories. So it's really starting to total up. Here our high fat potato, instead of just having 140 calories, we've more than doubled the calories by adding all these high fat products to it. Okay, but a, a baked potato by itself is a little bit dry and, and plain. So by adding a lower fat dressing that might be made with yogurt or um, also 
if you insist on sour cream, they do sell lower fat sour creams now at the supermarket. Most sour creams are about 14% milk fat and the lighter sour creams are only about 7% milk fat. So by doing that and adding some chives rather than the, um, the sour cream and butter and bacon bits, it can taste delicious but not have quite so many calories. And here we see it's, it's um, you know, about half the calories or even less. Okay. French fries, they can taste good and once in a while they're fine to enjoy. But if you're having them for lunch every week, you can see that the, the um, fat and calorie intake really increases. So just by frying um, these, this potato, it's uh, more than double uh, the calories here too. So if any of you enjoy French fries, there is a recipe in um, the Lighthearted Cookbook, which I'm going to talk more about today. Um, it's a cookbook that I highly recommend. It's got delicious recipes in it. And uh, there's a recipe in here for oven baked French fries. And what you do rather than deep frying them, which can mess up your kitchen anyway, <laughs> and make it smoky, is um, you put up the, the potato in strips and um, you add a little bit of uh, vegetable oil, the, one of the poly or monounsaturated oils like corn oil or safflower oil or canola oil. And um, you just mix a bit of oil in with it and then you can add um, any spices that you want. Some people like paprika <laughs> or dill on it. And then you put them on a cookie sheet and uh, put them in the oven and bake them. And they're much lower in fat and calories and they taste just delicious. So, um, and you'll notice that they won't be as greasy as, as the store-bought um, deep-fried ones. Okay, so we've talked about cutting back on total fat in the diet, and in particular, saturated fats. Are there any questions about that before we move on? Yes, Robert. On television. Mm -hmm. McCain is always advertising McCain? cholesterol. Oh, okay. Rice. I noticed that when they do say that, it's coming out of the oven. Yes, okay. Um, we, Robert was just commenting that McCain's is advertising no cholesterol French fries on TV. So is that a better product or isn't it? Um, and actually there's going to be um, an article in this uh, Monday's newspaper about this topic because it's a, a common question. If a product says no cholesterol in it, it doesn't mean that it's low in fat and it doesn't mean that it's low in saturated fats. Okay, <coughs> Cholesterol actually only comes from uh, plant or from animal sources. So when they say no cholesterol, it means that it, they haven't added lard or beef tallow or anything like that. But it, it could still have coconut and palm oil in it, uh, which are highly saturated fats. It, it could also have hydrogenated fats in it, which is another thing to look for. If, it's, if a fat has been hydrogenated, that's a, also a type of fat that can increase your cholesterol level. So whenever you see that label, no cholesterol, I always encourage people to read further, read the ingredient label and see, you know, maybe they're adding palm oil or, hydro or um, hydrogenated oils, okay? But I think with the McCain's, it, it also says that it's low in um, saturated fats, um, which is good, but there's still going to be some fat in it. So it's, it's probably a better choice than a lot of the other ones that would have the lard or beef in it, okay? Does that answer your question? Some steaks up there on the, and that's supposed to be red meat, isn't it? Pardon me? Some steaks. Yes. And that's supposed to be red meat. Mm -hmm. Well, I know I was prohibited from eating red meat at all. Mm. No red meat at all. Mm. And that's for cholesterol, since I had the surgery. Oh, okay. For, I teach a cholesterol class in the community, and doctors make referrals for um, people with high cholesterol. And often I'll hear people will say, well, I have high cholesterol, so I can't eat meat at all, or I can't eat dairy products. Um, red meat isn't necessarily higher in fat and cholesterol than white meat. And there's been a lot of pressure um, put on the beef industry to cut down and make their, their product a lot leaner. So what we're seeing these days is a, um, more lean cuts of beef, and beef can actually be lower in fat and calories than a high-fat chicken. 
So it's not really a good idea to, to say, you know, red, eat white meat versus red meat. It really depends on the cut and uh, what you do with it, whether you're taking the skin off your chicken or not, whether you're frying or broiling, that type of thing. Okay. Yeah. Well, red meat can be a good source of iron, and we're going to talk about iron more next month. But, um, you need a bit of meat. Yes. Okay. Uh, the third goal that I'd like to talk about here is lowering intake of dietary cholesterol. And um, as I mentioned, there is cholesterol in some foods, and some types of fats can increase the amount of cholesterol that our own body produces. But foods that uh, actually contain cholesterol will only be animal sources. So you won't find any cholesterol in a vegetable oil or um, you know, in a, uh, a vegetable itself or in any grains like rice doesn't have cholesterol. So dietary cholesterol is only found in animal sources. And um, there are some foods that are particularly high in cholesterol, and one of those is eggs, which contain about 300 milligrams of cholesterol per egg. And, and there was a subject, an eggs lover, and they found out that was a program from the States, mm -hmm. one of the doctors said, and they found out that eggs are not that bad for cholesterol. Right. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's not so much mm -hmm. the foods that contain cholesterol, that, that are contributing to high cholesterol levels. It's more the, the amount of fat and the type of fat in the diet. That's right. And I'm about one week, one egg a week. Mm -hmm. For people on a cholesterol lowering diet, we suggest um, choosing no more than three servings per week of high cholesterol foods. And those that includes, an example of one serving would be an egg, or um, shrimp is, is also an example of a food that is high in cholesterol, or caviar and squid. And most people don't have too much problem with, with the, the shrimp and the caviar and squid. Um, if you're a person that has a high cholesterol level and likes to, to eat a lot of eggs, um, something that you can do it is um, I recommend spreading them out throughout the week rather than having your three eggs in, in one meal. And if you wanted an omelette for breakfast and, and wanted to include more than just one egg, you could take one egg and then add the egg white of another egg. And if you add um, a spice called turmeric, that helps to make it um, look nice and yellow, like uh, so that your omelette would have that nice yellow color in it. Okay. There is also a product called egg beaters in the frozen food section at the grocery store. And if you really like to eat a lot of eggs, um, egg beaters is is eggs, but they've taken the fat and most of the fat and cholesterol out of it. So that's another thing that you might consider. Okay. Okay. So a uh, fourth goal for heart healthy eating is to increase the fiber and complex carbohydrate intake. And fiber is found only in plant sources. Okay, fiber is actually the part of the plant that um, we eat, but it's not um, digested and um, broken down. We don't absorb fiber into our body. So it, um, it comes out, but um, it's, also, it's found in um, things like fruits and vegetables and also our whole grains. So if you're choosing a flour for baking, it's a good idea to choose whole wheat flour or rye flour rather than your white flour. The white flour has about half as much fiber in it as the brown flour does. Okay. And they're finding that um, certain types of fibers can help to lower cholesterol levels. And um, those are the water-soluble fibers, which are found in fruits and vegetables and our legumes, like our dried split peas there, and our um, kidney beans, and I think those are lima beans and lentils there. Um, the fiber that are found in these things can actually help to lower cholesterol levels. Okay. And fiber is also found in bread and our um, <coughs> whole grain cer cooked cereals. Okay, when you're choosing a bread, I really suggest that people read the labels because often um, when you read the labels, the first ingredient may be white flour and white flour doesn't have a lot of fiber um, in it. And often the color of your bread can be a little bit misleading 
often uh, manufacturers will add molasses or caramel coloring to make it look nice and brown. And you might think, wow, this is a lot of fiber in here. But, uh, you know, read the ingredients because often it would be a white flour. And so what you're looking for is um, a label that says 100% whole wheat or 100% whole grain. Okay. And um, whole grain flour or um, bread has about twice as much fiber in it as your white bread does. So it tastes a lot better too, I think. Okay. So when you're looking at your dinner plate or your lunch plate, what you really want to see isn't um, you know, a piece of, of a big piece of meat and, and potato and then just a couple of small vegetables thrown on for color. I, I really encourage people to increase their intake of fruits and vegetables and, and try to make sure that they're, they're taking up a large part of your plate. Um, not only do, will they add fiber, but lots of color and, and variety and enjoyment and flavor to your meal. And um, not only is the heart association, but also the cancer society is encouraging us to eat more fruits and vegetables. Okay, so we have our nice whole grain bread here for fiber. And then um, it looks like a tuna sandwich. Okay. Um, we're coming to the end of our slideshow. And um, another goal that we're looking at for heart healthy eating is watching our salt intake. And this is particularly important for people with high blood pressure. Okay. Oh, you threw your salt away. <laughs> okay. Some people are sensitive to salt, and when they eat salt, their blood pressure will go up. Um, some people aren't as sensitive to salt. Um, so it's good to know what your blood pressure is. It's good to know whether or not you need to be especially careful. And um, what we suggest is avoid adding it to food. You know, we often see people sit down at their meal and without even tasting it, um, yeah. you know, shaking the salt on there. So give the cook a fair chance. Try, try it first and see if it really needs it. Chances are that it won't. And, um, you get used to it. Yes, that's a good point. You do get used to it. If your doctor has advised you to cut back on salt, then um, you might think at first, well, how am I going to ever do this? I love salt. So um, just realize that you, your taste buds do adjust. Mm -hmm. And after you've cut down for a while, if you go back to your, those salty things that you ate, you'll probably think that they don't taste very good. Okay. So um, try not to use too much in cooking either. For instance, a lot of muffin and cookie recipes call for a lot of salt. And you really don't even need to add any in those recipes. Um, and the majority of salt in the Canadian diet actually comes from convenience um, pre-prepared foods. So watching our intake of that can really help cut down on the salt in our diet. And I actually brought, um, I brought some handouts for you today um, to help you uh, with cutting back on fat and salt in the diet. And it's called flavoring your foods without salt. So what it is, is it's a list of various different foods, different types of meats and vegetables and grains. And uh, it gives you an idea of different herbs and spices that taste really nice with these. So by adding um, you know, something like oregano or, or parsley or thyme or lemon juice um, to your various foods, that can help enhance the flavor without the salt. And if you still really like having something to shake, on your salads or soups or um, meat and vegetables. On the back, there are some recipes for what we call herb shakers. And you can actually get a salt shaker and combine different um, spices and just make your own. Uh, there's also a commercial one available. It's called Mrs. Dash. And this is one that happens to be low in salt. Not all of the um, seasoning um, combinations that you can buy in the grocery store are low in salt. Mm -hmm. And a, an example would be spike, for instance. Have you ever heard of spike? It, of it, it tastes know. good, but it's very high in salt still, so it's not a good alternative. But Mrs. Dash salt. is good. Mrs. Dash is good, and they're starting to come out with a variety of different flavor combinations. So if you like it hot and spicy, or, or I think they have one that's sort of an Italian taste. And these are, are nice in salads, or um, whatever you feel like you need to to add on. Okay. So you're welcome to, to take these recipes. It gives you an idea of different herbs that taste nicely together. And, and like I say, you can actually put it in a salt shaker and have it available. Okay. Any more questions?
questions about salt or blood pressure? That they would age and salt, what is it? Oh, okay. Um, it, somebody is just asking about imitation salt, okay, and, and um, there are a variety of ones available, like no salt or new salt, and um, they do taste salty, but rather than sodium in them, um, sodium is the component of salt that makes your um, blood pressure go up. Rather than sodium, they've added potassium to it, so it's potassium chloride instead of sodium chloride. And some people, particularly those with a heart condition, may need to be careful about their potassium intake. So if anybody is using salt substitutes, I always recommend that they discuss it with their doctor. Okay. Yeah. Well, some people still like to have something to add. Yeah. You prove that this sometimes. Yes. Okay. Um, you might be wondering about sea salt and whether sea salt is any better for you than regular salt, and it has the same effect on your blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it may have some additional um, trace elements in it that you wouldn't find in regular table salt, but the amount of salt that you have to eat to make it substantial is, is more than we recommend anyway. Okay. Sugars and sweets are also a good thing to watch. Um, they can provide a lot of excess calories or energy and we know what happens when we eat too many calories is that, um, that those calories that we've eaten get stored as fat on the body and overweight is a risk factor for heart disease. Okay. Um, and if you eat excess sugar, it can actually increase uh, a type of fat in the blood called triglycerides. So it's a good idea to know whether or not you have a high triglyceride level. If your doctor is testing your cholesterol, you may ask whether or not your triglycerides are high too. Okay, and when you're reading labels, there's sugar added to a lot of different foods. Um, so it's a good idea to, to look on the labels for hidden sugars. And if you see words that end in O-S-E, um, such as fructose, suc sucrose is the name for table sugar, Sucrose is a type of sugar, maltose, dextrose, fructose, those are all um, examples of sugar. And if a word ends in O-L, it's often a sugar alcohol, which has as many calories as sugar does. What about honey? Honey is a, exactly a, a type of sugar um, that can have the same effect on your triglyceride levels. It does. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. And it's, it has calories just like sugar does. One thing about honey, if you are using it, is that it is sweeter than sugar. So you may be able to get away with eating a little less and get the same sweetness. So that might be one advantage. But it has the same effect on, on um, weight control as sugar does. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and also on, um, uh, for diabetics, it has the same effect on blood sugar levels. So we're not saying to cut out sugar completely, no, no, but, but to, you know it can still enhance the flavor of your foods. Mm -hmm. But um, an excess amount isn't isn't good for us, okay? And the um, spice list that I'm giving you here has some um, of what I call sweet spices listed on there. Things like cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice, um, cloves. Those are called sweet spices, and they can really enhance the sweet flavor of foods. For instance, if you're eating unsweetened applesauce, you, could, you might want to sprinkle some cinnamon on that yeah, or on your porridge in the morning yeah. or in your fruit crisps, and that can make it taste a little bit sweeter. Okay. And then the last um, food item that I wanted to mention is alcohol. And again, alcohol has a lot of calories in it, so for weight control, it doesn't help. <laughs> it, it, um, all forms of alcohol can increase the triglyceride levels. So again, it's nice to know what your triglyceride levels are. And also the um, sweet drink mixes can contain a lot of sugar in them. So uh, alcohol really isn't a good thing to be eating or um, consuming a lot of for a healthy heart. Okay. So I would just like to finish off by um, saying that heart healthy eating um, doesn't have to mean um, boring eating. It, it can actually be very delicious. And um, one cookbook that I mentioned earlier is by Ann Lindsay and the, the Heart Association, and it's called The Lighthearted Cookbook. 
and it has wonderful, delicious recipes in it with um, really nice pictures. And um, so it shows you how you can achieve all of the things that we talked about today. Cutting back on total fats, um, cutting back on, in particular, saturated fats in the diet, increasing fiber in the diet, cutting back on your cholesterol intake, and watching your intake of salt and sugar and alcohol. So they're, they're very delicious recipes. And um, if you need, you're feeling like you need some inspiration <laughs> for, for changing your food habits to become heart healthy, this, this might be a good idea. She's also come out with another one, and it's called Lighthearted Everyday Cooking. It's by the same author and the Heart Association. And there's some really nice ideas in here for using different legumes and grains. There's so many different whole grains available, it's a shame to just stick to, to one or two. So she gives you an idea of how to prepare them and what they're called and, and where you might like to use them. Um, really nice ideas for um, preparing beans and, and how to soak them, for instance. So, I've got um, another handout as well as the um, salt one, or the um, herb shakers one, and that's on fiber. So if any of you are wondering about um, what foods are high sources of fiber, you might like to pick up this sheet. And I'll also put it on the bulletin board at the back for you to take. Okay, are there any questions about today's? Uh, and that's the, the, the bananas. Yes, bananas. What would yeah. you like to know? Well, do you have a me? No. Okay, bananas come from the fruit and vegetable group, and they're not really fattening. No, no, they have a lot fewer have calories than... I have one a day. Yeah, no, that's fine. A banana a day, I think it's great. No problem there. Enjoy your bananas. <laughs> yeah. You'll, you'll notice that um, for lunch today, they're is going to be quite a bit of fiber in your lunch. For dessert, they've made a nice fr uh, fruit salad and also spinach salad for lunch oh. and um, uh, a, a nice uh, vegetarian lasagna, which is excellent. And I believe that that recipe comes from the Lighthearted Cookbook. So it's one, if you if you get the book, they're available at the bookstores downtown. You might like to try that one. Of course, some of us live at the Jubilee Manor uh -huh. where the cook is all done. Mm -hmm. No, but you can still control portion sizes and you can, you can the amount of salt you're putting on. Yeah. Yes, you yeah. can yeah. That's great. Okay, well I'd like to thank you all and wish you a, a, all a happy heart health month. And next month we'll be talking about um, mineral matters and we'll talk about two minerals in particular, um, calcium and iron in the diet. Okay, so if you have some questions, bring them along next month. So thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.